Travelers to the bamboo thickets and mountains of China sometimes hear strange sounds resembling the cries of a baby. These sounds are the contact calls of the rare golden monkey, an animal which few people have ever seen or heard in the wild, even in China. For the second time in history, golden monkeys are being exhibited in a western zoo. They come to the Woodland Park Zoo on friendship loan from the Seattle sister city, Chongqing, in the People's Republic of China. Elsewhere, about 60 golden monkeys are exhibited in Chinese zoos where they are bred in captivity. Golden monkeys come to Seattle as ambassadors of conservation, a reminder of the need to preserve wildlife habitat wherever human populations expand and disrupt natural systems. Most of us are familiar with the giant panda, which has become a symbol of conservation worldwide. In China, pandas and golden monkeys live in the same areas and are considered symbols of national pride. They are both protected as first priority endangered species by the Chinese government. Although biologists know a lot about giant pandas, very little is known about golden monkeys. We do know that they are found in the mountains of central and southwestern China, where snow covers the ground for as long as six months of the year. They can be distinguished from other monkeys by their unique coloring, body form, and by their large size. Adult males can reach weights of more than 40 pounds and stand nearly three feet tall. Golden monkeys have unusually thick fur. The long hair on the back forms a kind of cape that flies in the wind as they leap from branch to branch. Each fall, they grow a new, thicker coat, which helps them keep warm throughout the snowy winter. But even more striking is their sky blue face, which contrasts with a frame of golden fur. The nostrils of the monkey's upturned nose look like the wings of a small butterfly which has landed in the middle of its face. Males have peculiar wart-like flaps on their upper lips, and these appear to exaggerate their threat grimace as they reveal their sharp teeth. To keep adequately nourished, golden monkeys have to eat large quantities of plant material. Because they live where many trees drop their leaves and fall, their food supply is much smaller during autumn and winter. So during the cold season, they have to cover much larger areas of forest to find enough to eat. As humans clear these forests for wood and farming, the golden monkey's food source and its home are threatened. There are many species of animals in China and elsewhere which face similar threats. Through the end of April, Woodland Park Zoo is drawing attention to the wildlife treasures of China in a special series of exhibits called the China Corridor, including some which are gifts from our sister city zoo in Chongqing. Red pandas are remarkable tree climbers and members of the raccoon family. They have thick fur, which helps them stay warm in the cold mountains of China. They even use their tails as mufflers, wrapping them around their bodies for extra warmth. During the early morning and evening, red pandas feed on fruits, seeds, eggs, and on bamboo. The Chinese, or Reeves muntjac, is a small deer found at lower elevations where it eats leaves from willow and birch trees. Its unusual tusks may play a role in defense, but its alertness and ability to run quickly to a hiding place are even more important to its survival. Gifts from the Chongqing Zoo include pheasants, like the Temenix trichopan. During courtship, the male flashes a brilliant wattle which resembles the Chinese character for long life. Historically, Temenix trichopans were caught and caged for good luck, a practice which is no longer encouraged. The Sichuan white-eared pheasant inhabits high, rocky areas in China, where its white color helps to camouflage it in the snow. Male and female are nearly identical in their appearance, which is very unusual among pheasants. Without exception, 
the survival of species represented in the China Corridor at Woodland Park Zoo depends on the cooperative efforts of many people, zoos, and governments. The golden monkey in particular reminds us that the concern for wildlife goes beyond the boundaries of any single country. Today, we observe golden monkeys and other zoo animals, not just as curiosity items, but as symbolic ambassadors of conservation and international goodwill. This friendship loan of golden monkeys from China is a gesture of hope for the future of wildlife. As we cooperate with people of other cultures, perhaps we can preserve wildlife habitats so that our wildlife treasures do not disappear forever, and so that zoos do not become their only refuge. In the wild, golden monkeys leap towards an uncertain future. But where there is international cooperation and understanding, there is also hope for their future in the wild.